Deep Rock Galactic is the only class-based game I've ever played where I have fun playing every class. Even in games I absolutely love, like Team Fortress 2, only half the classes are fun for me, and that's better than most class-based games fare. So, it really is a testament to Deep Rock Galactic that I have fun with every class. Uh, but why, though? What makes Deep Rock Galactic so fun? What makes it, dare I say, a timeless masterpiece? Personally, I tend to gravitate to support classes in any game. Why do I like the Scout then? That's not a support class. Here's the genius of Deep Rock. Every class is a support class. Granted, in combat, the Scout is pretty much just DPS, but out of combat, the Scout is shooting flares so his team can see, collecting stuff no other class can reach, and well, Scout-ing ahead. In other words, supporting his team. But what if you're not like me? What if supporting your team just isn't fun to you? Won't all this support stuff detract from the fun of the game? No, idiot, because it supports you as well. You want to be able to see, so of course you'll shoot a few flares out. Even if you are playing purely selfishly, your team still benefits from that extra light. Two players might perform the same action, but find it fun for different reasons. The support player likes flares because they help out the team, and the selfish player likes flares because they help him murder bugs unimpeded by darkness. Likewise, the gunner's ziplines and shields, the driller's drills, and the engineer's platforms and turrets help out both the dwarf that placed them, and the team as a whole. No matter which class you play, Deep Rock Galactic has done an amazing job in creating a fun gameplay loop. Admittedly, as a co-op game, it's kind of cheating, since of course you'll have fun with your friends. To show just how great Deep Rock Galactic is, let's look at another 4-player co-op horde FPS, Left 4 Dead 2. I don't like Left 4 Dead. How can I love Deep Rock so much, when I hate such a similar game? While there are a myriad of small things that are better in Deep Rock, the main three things that make Deep Rock great are build variety, mission variety, and mobility. Build variety is pretty self-explanatory. Let's inventory our arsenal, shall we? In Left 4 Dead, you've got various kinds of pistols, rifles, machine guns, shotguns, and melee weapons. Yes, technically one shotgun is different to another shotgun, but how much variety is really added in just a few tweaked numbers? As for unique weapons, there's the grenade launcher, minigun, and chainsaw. Deep Rock has all of these, but it's also got slow-moving laser projectile launcher, shotgun that launches you into the stratosphere, icky gross goo haha -ha launcher, and so much more. And that's only the primary and secondary weapons. You've also got different classes, different grenades, different perks, different upgrades, and different overclocks. And these options, for the most part, aren't just minor tweaks. The difference between, say, the Subita and Wave Cooker is a big one. It is nothing short of commendable just how much variety there is in the builds. But this abundance of variety isn't limited to who you are, with build variety, but also what you do, with mission variety. Let's compare to TF2. In TF2, the main game modes consist of stand on a point, stand on a point that moves, stand on several points in order, go to a point, then come back, and fight robots. Snore. Aside from man vs. machine, none of these game modes actually change the formula of a typical match. Well, there is pastime, but no one plays it, and it sucks. In Deep Rock, the mission types consist of mine more kite, collect eggs, install tubes leading to oil, then defend that oil, repair mini mules, then defend a point, collect aquark aided by turrets, ride a giant drill, then fight a big rock, hatch and kill bosses, and finally, disable power stations via hacking, then fight a big robot. Now, I'm not about to say that the different mission types make it feel like a whole new game, but the mission types each introduce new mechanics and provide a twist on the core gameplay. That goes a long way for keeping a game fun for a long time, as I can attest. In fact, the mission types are even more varied than my reductive summaries imply, because each mission has a random biome, a random secondary objective, random modifiers, and each mission type changes the map generation. For instance, mining expedition maps are one giant path, while point extraction maps are usually one huge chamber. Oh, that's right, this game has procedurally generated maps. And it's awesome. But, you may ask, how could a soulless procedural map possibly compare to the handcrafted beauties that are the maps in, say, TF2? Yes, TF2 maps are very well designed, for the most part, but they get old. Any map would once you've played it hundreds of times. Whereas, for every single Deep Rock mission, I don't already know where everything's going to be. I have to improvise and quickly think up the best strategy for this particular map. Deep Rock's maps don't get old. Last on my list, but certainly not least, is mobility. Each class has amazing mobility. 
which is kind of weird, right? You'd think that the Scout would be the only class with great mobility. And while the Scout is definitely the fastest, the other classes have great mobility in a different way. Changing the environment. Nothing is more satisfying than creating a shortcut with Driller, or going over annoying obstacles with Gunner, or negating fall damage with Engineer. This is all well and good, but the real genius comes when combining these map-altering tools with procedural maps. Every single mission you start, there are so many options. Every time I start a mission as Driller, I ask myself, where can I drill some shortcuts? Is there anywhere I can drill a staircase? Should I create a bunker in advance in case of emergencies? And so on. That's what all this greatness combines into. A game where there's always so much to think about at once. Even with my ADHD and microplastics addled brain, I can't get bored. Ghost Ship Games deserves all the credit I give them, not just for making an amazing game, but also for their amazing continued support through updates. So far we've been getting about two big updates per year, which is pretty quick considering how much is in each update. But the updates being quick wouldn't help if they were crappy. Fortunately, Deep Rock is one of the very few games where the updates actually make the core game better. Sure, loads of games add new maps and weapons and whatnot, and that is good, but it doesn't much improve the game itself. It just adds more options. Deep Rock's updates, on the other hand, actually fix issues and have made the game significantly more fun. For instance, mission types too boring? Fixed. Biomes too boring? Fixed. Not enough build variety? Fixed. Not enough enemy variety? Fixed. Cave generation too samey? Fixed. Perks are pointless? Fixed. Dreadnoughts too boring? Fixed. Soundtrack not crazy good enough? Fixed. Not enough warnings? Fixed. Cosmetics eating up your credits? Fixed. Not beginner friendly? Fixed. Have any other possible minor issues? Those maniacs added mods to the game, and modders have stepped up to solve a myriad of little problems. Is Molly too slow? Fixed. Is Doretta too frail? Fixed. Is your C4 not Minecraft TNT? Fixed. Are your flares not Minecraft torches? Fixed. But the best example of what Deep Rock gets right where so many stumble is the Battle Pass. The Battle Pass in Deep Rock is completely free. There's no premium Battle Pass or anything. And once the season's over, every item from the Battle Pass can still be collected, just through different means. Who would have guessed that there could be a Battle Pass that doesn't just exist out of greed, but to actually improve the game? Oh man, let's talk about something else before I need to change my underwear. Uh, the music kicks ass. Especially if you're a huge dark synthwave nerd like I am. You know shit's about to get real when mission control is like, Time to earn your paycheck, team. Got a doozy of a swarm on the way. And then the music is all like, God, that part rocks! Get it? Cause rock. Moving on, the sound effects are really satisfying. My personal favorites are the loot bug and cave angel sounds. Wink wink. But not only are the sound effects satisfying, they also aid the gameplay. For example, the whine of a Mactera grabber is an important warning. Because it's an important sound, they manage to make it so distinct you can always hear it, even with the din of chaos around you. More important than everything I've mentioned so far, more important than the core gameplay, are the fun little details, which Ghost Ship Games have demonstrated a mastery of. For example, riding pipelines, riding cave angels, those exploding plants that cause a domino effect of explosions, man those are satisfying. I also love how loot bugs eat spare minerals, and when you pet them they occasionally poop out a mineral chunk. Those are just a few examples. I swear, someone should make a video or two about this kind of thing. So, do I have any complaints? Yes, I am that pedantic. The dwarves are all voiced by one guy. The lines just get pitched up or down depending on who's saying them. While this is economical, the game's personality suffers greatly because of this. Imagine if every mercenary in TF2 had the same voice. Would the characters be nearly as iconic or fun? The answer is no. So why settle for the same for Deep Rock? Another annoyance is the class icons, which are just the faces of the default dwarves. These are somewhat difficult to tell apart at a glance. That wouldn't be too bad, except for the fact that you customize your dwarf. So, to represent any given dwarf, you get an icon that looks nothing like them. What's really infuriating is that the classes already have really great icons. The abstract silhouettes are visually distinct while representing each class well, and they're color-coded, so they're easy to tell apart at a glance. 
Why aren't these the class icons used in gameplay? I have no clue. At least there's a mod to fix this unforgivable transgression. Personally, I find cave leeches more annoying than fun. Lastly, mining itself gets old after a while. By that I mean the actual process of hitting minerals with your pickaxe. It provides no challenge or excitement, and I've started ignoring gold because it's not fun to mine. I wish they would increase the speed of mining and or increase the amount of minerals dislodged by every swing. Despite these nitpicks, DRG is still incredibly fun. Frankly, it's so well designed it kinda blows my mind, and it's only getting better. That's why, despite only hitting 1.0 two years ago, Deep Rock Galactic is already an all-time classic. This video should have come out sooner, but my old microphone broke as I was recording voiceover. I took that as an opportunity to upgrade my whole recording setup, so hopefully now I sound less like I'm speaking through a tin can. If you have any critiques or advice about the audio quality, please share them. I have no idea what I'm doing. This video has a much more comedic bent than my previous videos. Please tell me what you think of this formula, I'm not too sure yet.